Today, we've truly gone ahead and taken it to the next level. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As we know, dry aging beef drastically improves tenderness as well as flavor. Through our experiments, we've tried all sorts of stuff. From adding citrus to whiskey to even chocolate, we've had some incredible results. Roast number one was inspired by steakhouse flavor. We have herbs, garlic, covered in red wine. I cannot wait to slice into this one. Next, we have our Sour Patch Kids Dry Aged Roast. Sour Patch Kids, Citric Acid, and even Champagne. It's currently sticky to the touch and smells incredible. Honestly, I have no idea what's gonna happen when we cut into these things, but either way, I can't wait. And with that, let's get started. This is a USCA Prime Strip Loin. You can see it has this really nice fat cap on top and fully exposed on the back. You can see how this side looks just like a New York strip and has incredible marbling. This side still has great marbling and it's the side that's perfectly adjacent to the sirloin. Since we're dry aging, we want as much protection as possible. We have that nice fat cap, but this exposed side might be a little bit of a problem. As you can see, there's patches that go down deep and we wanna make sure through the dry aging process, those don't harbor any bacteria. Now, since we're dry aging this two ways, I'm gonna cut this in half. Nice smooth motion and make sure your knife is sharp. Here you can really see that gorgeous marbling. Okay, so for our first roast, I'm using really traditional steakhouse flavors. We have red wine, rosemary, thyme, and garlic. For our next roast, we're having a little bit of fun. We got a whole bunch of Sour Patch Kids. Okay, so starting with our garlic, I'm just gonna open this up. I'll probably chop up about two heads of garlic. Let's chop up the garlic. So now we're gonna move on to our herbs. The smell is already incredible. Anytime I smell rosemary, it brings me back to my grandmother's house. She always used to cook with it. Let me know in the comments if you use the term herbs or herbs. Where I come from, it's definitely herbs and not herbs. And of course, we need our red wine. Now I'm using the Snoop Dogg wine. Turns out he's vegetarian, huge disappointment, but Either way, we're using it. So the first thing we're gonna do is add our garlic. Roughly this amount. Make sure we get all sides. Now again, this is an experiment, so I have no idea what's gonna happen, if the flavor's gonna penetrate, but we'll see what happens. It smells great right now. Next, we have our rosemary. Finally, we're adding our thyme. It looks great, it smells incredible. The final step, we're gonna wrap in cheesecloth, then cover in a whole bunch of red wine, place down your roast, and gently start to wrap it up. Now we're gonna add our wine. Notice how that cheesecloth is absorbing the liquid. If this liquid at the bottom, we're just gonna dip the sides of our roast in it, just to make sure everything is fully covered. We're gonna put this right in the dry ager for the next 30 days. Keep in mind, this is an experiment. I've never done this before. And there's always a risk that the garlic or herbs might rot. Who knows what's gonna happen, but we'll check back in in about 30 days. So for the second one, we're gonna have a little fun. We're doing salad This is a lot harder than I was expecting. It is really sticking to this knife and it's a lot harder than it looks, but we're making progress. So we've chopped these up a whole bunch. I think we've made progress, but they're kind of just sticking to each other at this point. So I think we're done. We're gonna try putting this on the roast and see what happens. Okay, now I'm gonna add our Sour Patch Kids. If you're enjoying this video, do me a quick favor and hit that thumbs up. It really does help. It is a major struggle getting these things to stick, but I think I figured it out. Slowly but surely, we're getting these on there. I really have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Just for good measure, I'm adding some citric acid, hoping to get that sour taste. So we got it all wrapped up. Now to go with this monstrosity, we gotta use some expensive looking sparkling rosé. After taking a sip of this, I have a feeling this is gonna taste disgusting, but let's do it. Okay, it's been a month, finally time to take them out. We just took them out, they both look and smell incredible. 
Starting with the wine age, it has that traditional dry age texture. Hard on the outside, beautiful deep purple color, and it smells of herbs and garlic. Next, we have our Sour Patch Dry Aged Roast. I'm gonna be honest, this one is looking ridiculous. It's still extremely wet on the outside, almost sticky, completely different than a traditional dry aged roast. There's literal moisture, might be syrup kind of seeping towards the top. I have no idea if this dry aged properly, but I cannot wait to cut it open. Let's open up the wine aged roast. As you can see, our cheesecloth is really adhered to the beef. As you can see, our herbs have dried out beautifully over the exterior. We have that nice deep purple hue. There's a very small amount of white mold throughout, which is totally normal. This to me looks like a perfectly dry aged piece of beef. Let's cut into it. As you can see, the marbling looks absolutely incredible. And the smell is honestly intoxicating. You get that wine, those herbs, all those classic steakhouse flavors combined with the dry age Incredible. We're gonna cut ourselves an inch and a half thick steak. And as always with dry aged steaks, we're gonna remove that outer pellicle. This fat here is great. We can grind it up for burgers later. Even though we're removing this exterior, the goal is that those flavors have already penetrated, but we won't know until we taste it. Okay, it's finally time to cut into the Sour Patch dry age. I gotta say, this is the most excited I've ever been to cut into one of these things. Let's do it. So I don't see any mold, which is a great sign. It's extremely sticky and it just smells like candy. I gotta say, I am shocked with how good these results look at this point. Perfectly dry aged beef, incredible marbling, no weird reactions with the candy, citric acid, or champagne. It's definitely sticky and smells sugary, but so far so good. All right, let's take off the steak. Now, let's trim up our Sour Patch steak. After four long weeks of waiting, this is our result. Both steaks are looking great. As with all dry aged steaks, you can see the texture has gotten a little bit more firm. We have our wine steakhouse inspired dry age and our Sour Patch Kids. We're gonna season them both simply just with salt. High smoke point avocado oil. This is gonna allow our salt to stick. Kosher salt. Make sure to get both sides as well as the edges. Avocado oil. We're gonna start by searing off the fat side. Wow, I can immediately start smelling all those herbs and garlic. It's really important to apply pressure here to make sure we get a nice even crust. Flip after about a minute. As you can see, our crust is already starting to form and it looks great. Now that our crust is starting to form, we're gonna start butter basting with half a stick of butter and nothing else to really taste those flavors of the steak. Now we're gonna start to baste. We put an internal of 110, time to take it off. Again, we're gonna baste. We have a beautiful crust on both of these steaks. And notice how I'm resting them on a rack. This is gonna help protect that bottom crust. We're gonna start by slicing into the wine herb. Next, our Sour Patch Kids. After 30 long days of waiting, the time is finally here and I gotta say, I am ecstatic to try these out. Over here, we have our Steakhouse Inspired Dry Age. That red wine, garlic, herbs, the smell is unbelievable. Then over here, of course, this is the one that I'm most excited about. We have our Sour Patch Kids Dry Age. Covered in champagne, 
citric acid for that sourness. I haven't tried it yet, so honestly, I have no idea if it's good, but visually, I gotta say, it looks great. Let's go for a bite. We're gonna start with the more conservative one, our steakhouse red wine. Let's do it. This combination of flavors is actually perfect. Definitely get that red wine. A nice subtle herb flavor. I'm not getting too much garlic, but that combination, especially with the dry aged flavor, is absolutely delicious. It's an overall very refined flavor, extremely tender. This to me is the perfect steak. Next up, we have our Sour Patch Kids. I gotta say, I'm shocked with how good this came out visually. Let's see how it tastes. Oh my God. This is actually incredible. It's almost like the caramelization on top of a creme brulee, but definitely not overpowering. It still tastes like steak. You get that dry aged flavor. Honestly, I'm not tasting any Sour Patch Kids whatsoever. It's just a really nice and delicate sweetness. And to me, it's actually incredible. After tasting more of it, in fact, I'm really starting to taste the Sour Patch Kids now. It depends what part of the steak you eat. But again, it's not overpowering and somehow it actually works. Okay, now I'm gonna do something that I hope is the first and last time a human ever does, but we're going for it. It's really weird, honestly. In this case, it's overly sweet, really strange. I would say this combination does not go together, but in this context, just the steak itself, my sister and I both agree that it works out great. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I got way more experiments just like this coming soon. I'll see you next time.